Welcome back to the Tidy Room Hanger, this is Mike, and I'm coming at you the weekly news and review for May 14th, 2023, 2023. Of course, we've got some Masterpiece Transformer news like this guy and Mainline and some Legends. A couple of things going on in the G.I. Joe classified space. Of course, absolutely nothing going on with O-Ring. Nothing at all with O-Ring. And then McFarlane, they've got the... Batman 66, the next wave. Well, some in-hand images. I don't think they're showing up in stores yet. But I got some stuff to say about this. Really cool looking. And then we've got an in-hand image of Whiplash. A little bit of Mo2 to talk about today. And, of course, TMNT. A little bit of TMNT. And, really, actually, there's really no news for Star Wars. But there's some updates. So we'll get into that and more coming up. Okay, as usual, starting out with what's new at Show Z, and I do want to point out that BBTS has this Motormaster up for pre-order for a reissue, and I know everybody's been looking for this that didn't already have one, and so with that, noticing Show Z has upgrade kits, this upgrade kit is $73. I actually see it for different prices, different places, and there's a lot to this, but if maybe you don't like $73, or I think the cheapest I've ever seen anywhere was $60, for this upgrade kit for the Minasaur, then maybe you want to go with the KO, but it's a little bit less. So on the left is the DNA Designs full-on upgrade kit. On the right is a KO of that, but not everything. Just kind of the main components to fix some of the issues and make it taller for $25. I think that's pretty cool. I'm going to get one. I'm going to check it out and all that kind of stuff. Seems pretty interesting. Next up, we have the Magic Square MSB21EX. So this is an EX version. I think this might have paint on a level that could compete with New Age. I hope so, but I really like this design. I prefer this design to the New Age design, but now we're going to have paint on it. So I've got this coming. I have the first one that has like no paint on it at all. So we'll see how that works out. I got it coming for $27, a pretty good deal. And we all love Fans Toys, don't we? But Fans Toys on sale is really nice. Now, if you haven't picked up this Spindrift 2.0 yet, on sale for 85 bucks. Yes, I paid 100 for mine. I thought that was a good price, a pretty good value. It's not a bad figure. I just, I kind of actually think x Transbots and theirs that was like 60 or 70 was a little bit better, in my opinion. But if you like to go straight fans toys, 85 bucks. So getting into some news here. Masterpiece News, the x Transbots is putting out their Commander stack in a clear yellow and i'm not sure why it's the mx 22c i don't know why it's yellow uh clear i'm sure there's a very specific reason why but looking at it it's it's a good solid figure uh, i just reviewed the second run of the first coloration of it and they fixed all the issues that happened with the first run to my knowledge and so i'm very pleased with the figure transformation is still quite a bit of a bear i don't know if the clear is going to have an issue with transformation or any of that kind of stuff because we know with clear plastic, it can be quite brittle over time, but interesting looking. I, again, don't know why it's yellow. Now, the cab's not going to be clear, and I think that might be the smart move. They might have done that because of there's so many pieces that fold and all that. That cab is crazy. So, big possibility that they made it out of clear plastic, it would break real easily. So, I don't know. I mean, that's just my guess, but anyhow, there it looks in alt mode, solid cab, Clear everything else for the most part. So we got pictures of what's told to be Punch Counterpunch from X Transbots. So I think it looks uh, strange because <laughs> it's not done yet. It's prototype only, but I'm happy to see that they're actually making progress on it. And I'm pretty sure it's going to match the digital renders coloration and all that kind of stuff. So it's going to look good in the end. But yeah, it looks really strange like this. It's actually a test shot, not a prototype. So they're further along with it if it's actually a test shot. And hopefully, maybe by the end of the year, maybe we'll have it by the end of the year. But this is on my most anticipated list because it's a character we haven't gotten a masterpiece before. And the closest, best representation we have is from Hasbro. And that one's good, not great. It's not bad, but this, I'm hoping it's gonna be good. I have high hopes for this thing. 
Okay, so we got a Beast Wars Trans Metal 2 Trans Arts Cheetor. And I think that next to it is, I think, the original. I don't really keep up with the vintage or whatever the 90s kind of Beast Wars was. But I think it's cool. And looking at it, I feel like it looks a lot more like the cartoon. And I think Trans Arts does good work. And they have very quality figures. A little bit more lightweight than I thought they'd be. I thought they'd have more die cast. But that aside, they still look fantastic. So it's going to be a pretty good sized bot. So. Uh, really thinking that this is going to be an excellent release. I just don't realize how much bigger he is. He's big. That's a big dude. That's a, a very big version. I don't really remember from the show if he, like, grew. Or are we really comparing Masterpiece to Masterpiece here? And we got good kitty mode. Bad kitty mode. Whatever. Cat mode. Alt mode. Which looks pretty good. Now, I always thought this version was kind of funky looking. Uh, but at the same time, it was funky looking. But I thought it was interesting because I was more interested in the Transmetals than the first series. And when they went to Transmetals 2, some of those were really amazing kind of designs. So this one was kind of in the middle for me, but I still like it. I may pick it up. So we've seen Touch Toys in the past are making this robot that turns into a jet. And I don't think it's based off of any specific character. And this is something outside of any sort of lore. It's just a transforming robot that transforms from a pretty cool looking robot into a jet. And that's uh, the way I take it now. This We saw this last year in 2022. And so this is the most recent update that I've seen. Doesn't really look like much has happened too much. But still, it looks pretty cool. looks pretty good. Uh, maybe this is a test shot or something along those lines. But I bet it's a prototype. They still haven't quite gotten any molds made for it just yet. But still looks really good. The really nice looking plane mode overall. So it's one of those projects that I hope we can keep getting updates on. All right. So I... I got my recorder, I believe, coming in the mail, or it should be coming, showing up soon. Something along those lines. Anyhow, this picture is a really cool picture. It's from Miller Time. Uh, I think there's a lot more Miller Time now than there's Bud Light Time. But with this picture, you get to see all the different versions of Blaster over the years. And, and Transistor on the very left is what got me into third party. I was already in Masterpiece, but I, I avoided third party for the most part until this guy. And I was like, yeah, I got to get into third party because... Um, they, they look good. But in the, the middle you see on the left is the fans toys. On the right is the deformation space. And they, got, they both got pluses and minuses. There's good and bad points about each one of them. But they look so similar. And I think people that have really pointed out that the difference, differences between them, they're very, very small. I mean, I don't think it really would matter which one you have on your shelf. Um, other than the fact that you just are a brand loyalist and you want to stick with fans toys. Or you really like the paint job that fan toys puts out of those kinds of things but they are very very similar at least in my opinion uh, until i get them in hand though and then then i'll let you know my thoughts on that here's another story floating around the kang's toys ct long yan 01 so this is i don't think about it it's pretty interesting uh i'm curious what they got going on with this and what this is all about and i'm interested in seeing like actual pictures renders or whatever going on with it but this is a bit of a teaser. I'm sure there's other people more in the know than I am on what's going on with this. It's Stegzaro. Stegzaro. Anyway, look forward to seeing more maybe next week. So for whatever reason, KFC is putting out pictures of this Optimus Prime head for, I guess, or Power Master Prime. I mean, interesting, but I think the whole talking point behind this picture is face mask or mouth. And the, the light-up eyes aren't really that big of a deal as much as face mask or mouth. But I do want to say the more and more and more I deal with electronics and trying to cough up these batteries for these things, the less I'm starting to care about any of these gimmicks, the light-up eyes and the talking and all that. I used to love it. I used to love the light-up stuff. But I'm running out of batteries and I am kind of get tired of ordering special batteries. So uh, unless it's very specific, like with New Age and the ability to actually drive your character around the track on their Omega Supreme. I mean, stuff like that I think is a necessity, but some other stuff, not so much. Okay, so we've got an update on Metagate G05 Red Fantasy. This is a Bumblebee movie Shatter Triple Changer, actual Triple Changer. And we've kind of seen some hints at this before. Now this is an actual prototype and looks pretty good. Overall, if you really kind of think about what it's doing, it's going from this and then it turns into this airplane, which looks pretty good, opening cockpit and all that kind of stuff. 
and then it turns into a car, which we'll see here in just a second. I specifically separated this one from the other one we were looking at, uh, update on other projects, because they're similar, but yet way different at the same time. Here's the car, and so yet uh, something that we haven't seen Hasbro Mainline do just yet is have the Triple Changer at Mainline Retail. It has to be a third-party uh, masterpiece version to get this accomplished, so with that, it all looks pretty decent in each mode. Car mode might be the best. We have seen 30MDLX, and this is their Starscream, officially licensed, 7.8 inches tall. It's going to have a, all kinds of articulation. It's going to have die cast zinc alloy, uh, engineering grade plastics, internal frame system with over 50 points of articulation, two interchangeable faces, one detachable back wing system, two detachable null ray cannons, two detachable 3-0 original design blades, four pairs of interchangeable hands. So all kinds of stuff that's coming with this, but looks to be a pretty interesting release, and I'm sure we're going to see more and more about this. Okay, so Yellow Park is showing off some of their figures. This is the AMK series of the Rise of the Beast, and model kits. These are model kits you got to put together. They look fantastic, very high-end, high-grade. I did say this a few weeks ago. Be prepared for an onslaught of Rise of the Beast information, updates, all this kind of stuff. I'm not going to talk about every bit a stitch of Rise of the Beast stuff, so I will just stick to what I think is relatively pertinent. So I think this is cool looking though, and very high end, a very nice looking figure right here. Uh, we have this one here is another Optimus Primal, and so these are 20 centimeters tall, which I don't know was that eight inches or something like that. 2.20 divided by 2.54 gets you the conversion. To that and then Bubble is going to be 16 centimeters tall so uh, there's Bubble Bee and these are easy to assemble kits with pre-painted and pre-built parts and they are likely to be very affordable so no price on them yet still no price and what's a very affordable 50 80 120 Yolo Park and their $2,400 big Optimus Prime and all that kind of stuff so with that they look good all right so I'm trying to keep all of this uh, New Age Legends all the Legend stuff straight New Ages putting out this Legendary Heroes. This is their Cobra Rattler version of their Power Glide, and I don't even have the regular Power Glide in hand yet, and here's this thing coming along. I definitely need to pick this up. I maybe I hope I didn't miss the boat on it, because this is pretty cool. x Boss made one of these back in the day, and it's something rat or whatever, but it is so hard to get, and it was even expensive back then. It was, for the time, I mean, that one was, I don't, I don't remember how much exactly, but it was like 50 or 60 bucks, and it's really hard to get your hands on seven or eight years ago, or how long ago it was that they made it. But this one looks pretty good. Of course, this one's Legends, probably smaller than the next Transbots one. And we have this New Age version of their Hound now. Not really sure exactly what this one's called, but it's a different repaint of their Hound, which their Hound looks, looks pretty good. All the premium paint and stuff that's on it. Still, the mold... I like the design of Magic Square better when it comes to this character. And they're neck and neck on design. I think Magic Square wins design for me, but always wins paint presentation. Okay, so we got some pictures of the New Age Cosmos. And this is our Mini Warriors New Age Renaissance Max from Roboculus. Roboculus? Robloxulus? Uh, I'm Robo. Okay. Anyway. This is the packaging, this is what it looks like, and it looks pretty good overall, and here is the bot, and the bot looks good, so I think that it looks great. I think that either this one or the Magic Square, both of them are great, both good options. I look forward to getting one of these and checking it out, and I, I actually have Magic Square in alt mode. I'll probably keep this one in bot mode, depending on how tall he is and all that kind of stuff, but Cosmos is a goofy looking dude, no matter how you make him look good, but it actually is a pretty good looking Cosmos. I gotta hand it to New Age. I mean, I, I don't love every one of the releases, but I like most of the releases. But this is amazing. This is just a diorama kind of set, a display piece that is huge. I mean, lots of information we still don't know about it. But it is 36 centimeters tall, so 14 inches tall. So think about a masterpiece Skyfire tall, and then two foot wide. I mean, that is huge for a Legends display. Which, how many people are really going to have space for all that and all that kind of stuff? I mean, those are issues I sure don't. I don't have it on my space on my shelf for this, but I think it's amazing. I might even pick one up if the price is right for a different display. 
other than my legends but i think it's fantastic it's cool sliding doors and a lot of stuff going on and i'm sure there's more to this than we know okay so i guess we got some pictures here that were cut from a video from maxi nil and with that this is the rise of the beast voyager rhinox in hand images so this is what he looks like always the joke about in hand images and then you see him the hand in there holding it so that's uh, always fun and always funny but that's what that looks like and then here is the rhino mode so so with this i don't think it's a bad looking figure a bad looking character and i really feel like it sort of sticks pretty close to the source of rhinox so it's not straying too far and that's kind of the way i feel about these live action movies or cgi live action whatever you want to call what's going on with this next movie but staying close to the source material whether it's Staying close to your Beast Wars, or staying close to the G1, or all that kind of stuff. I feel like that is where the win is, and this doesn't look too bad. So last week we got a garbage leaked photo of Minor Megatron, and obviously this week we're getting a full painted, like this is this is the real deal here, and that's how it always goes, isn't it? Let's give you this garbage picture that you really can't tell what's going on. Maybe that's the new teaser for Hasbro. <laughs> they make it look like it's leaked, but it's not really, it's just a really crappy picture, but... It looks almost like you could almost call it a shattered glass or something, but that's not what it is, and it's minor. It's a minor. He has a mining pick kind of thing going on right there. So uh, here is his tank mode, and uh, again, like I said last week, his tank mode should be green. <laughs> if he's going to be a tank, he should be green, or he's turned into a gun, and that's just the way I feel. Definitely should not turn into an airplane, ever. So I, I guess what we're hearing is this is the first official pictures of Studio Series... Uh, Rise of the Beast, Optimus Prime. So this is what Hasbro's gonna be putting out on the shelves in the Studio Series, and I have to say it's not bad for for a movie version, Bumblebee kind of Optimus Prime, and they always change them up from one movie to the other to the other. You can't just leave them alone and stick with the one Prime. So it's it's gotta be a little bit different here and there. But with this, it looks good. I don't know if it's gonna be better. Then what we just got with the premium reissue of the last one, the last Studio Series Optimus Prime, they got a premium paint reissue. Uh, that might still be better than this, but this doesn't look bad. Okay, so we got pictures of, well, in hand pictures of the core class swoop and scar in hand. So I take it we need one more to make them combine because I didn't see any combined pictures. Or there's five, so I guess you need six to make them combine, I guess. Uh, by the way, I, I don't ever want to see a Dinobot combined, but I know there's a, a subgroup of collectors out there that want to see that. I just feel like to turn from robots and dinosaurs, it should be good enough. But when they combine, you always, always have something suffer in either the bot mode or the dino mode. So for that, I just I was in on these. I canceled all my orders. I'm just out on them. Maybe I'll catch them on a sell, but I don't know. I really don't want them to combine. So for that, just I'm going to avoid them and put all of my funds from this into leader class scale. Okay, so if you want to take last year's Holiday Prime and make it look like a standard Optimus Prime, then that's this VNR Prime, and so with it, it's been found in Peru, and said it was like 68 bucks or something along those lines, so not sure how it's going to be available here, if it's going to be available here, and how it's going to cost, and all that kind of stuff, but interesting that it's coming, and this is your Prime. People just go crazy over this trailer, I'm not lying. I can't believe it. The The Earthrise Optimus Prime trailer is like one of the cheapest trailers I've ever touched. And people just go crazy because they want a trailer. And there's just so few options out there. So we've got some rumors of Rise of the Beast characters that are going to get revealed. There's going to come out. So there's an RZ for RC, a Stratosphere Battle Trap, an Ape Link, a Bird Nightbird, maybe a real Nightbird, Governor Jack, Cheetah, uh, Noah Diaz, uh, Elena Wallace, Brianna Diaz, Chris Diaz, Azure, Jillian, Miss Green, Receptionist, Bishop, uh, Museum Keeper, and Burke. I don't know what's going on with all that, but figured I'd throw it out there. But I do I do like rumors. I, I, I hate to admit it. I like rumors. And it's more fun if they come true than if they don't. So we're supposed to be getting a buzzworthy Bumblebee Dead Prowl Studio a Studio Series 86 Dead Prowl. So we'll see how that happens. If it, if it does show up, Buzzworthy Bumblebee is a Target thing, so we'd see my targets. I gotta tell you, every Target exclusive Transformer has been easy to get. Really easy. For me, maybe I'm just lucky, but easy to get. And so with that, some of these even go on clearance. But uh, then again, a lot of them are repaints, but some aren't. So this is pretty cool. 
we'll see if it really comes out. Okay, so we're supposed to be having a Hasbro Pulse live stream for Transformers on Tuesday, the 16th, uh, 11 a.m., whatever. So, with that, it says it's featuring Robosin and Sixo. If Sixo is the one that does that amazing artwork, I believe, is that the same Sixo that I'm thinking of? But anyway, it's going to be pretty interesting. We'll see what is coming up with that. Okay, so my kids have kind of shown me some Earth Spark clips, and I gotta say, uh, I, I'm thinking about making a YouTube short out of it. Uh, I don't know what more I can say about this other than rolling the clips. Let me just roll this clip, and let you see. Nightshade's pronouns are they, them. He or she just doesn't fit who I am. My apologies. Please switch their piece. All right, so I did make that, and I was going to add a little bit to it and make a YouTube short. I actually hate YouTube shorts, and every one I make, I'm going to say I hate YouTube shorts. Leave that stuff on TikTok. But I do also want to say, I'm going to throw another one at the end of this, but I'm curious what you think. Should I make these shorts? Should I leave it alone? Should I just not make shorts at all? I do not like the idea of YouTube shorts, but YouTube wants all creators to make them. Oh, and I really can't comment about the content, or I, I don't know. If I make a comment on the, on the content, uh, I might actually get in trouble if I, if I mention the word freedom <laughs> freedom does not exist on social media all right so getting into other news talking about ramen toy this is their ramen racer they're still in the works on this thing now the early bird did end on this and now it is up to 200 so they didn't go all, all the way to the 250 you can still get in on the 200 you still have like another month to get the 200 dollars price point if you pre-order it now yes you have to pay up front for the pre-order of this then you pay for the shipping when it's time to ship and all that kind of stuff. And I think I'm in on the pur purple, orange one. <laughs> I'm on the orange one. Getting confused by the prototype colors here. Ace is dropping hits that they might actually make a DeLorean. A time machine. That's awesome. In one twelve scale. Meaning that you could put your whatever figures in it. Hopefully the NECAs will fit. That will be awesome. And we need that. And why isn't NECA doing it? Why didn't NECA do it? Okay, so... I did review a test shot of the Machina Red Gold Wing. Very solid, amazing looking vehicle. Doesn't look this good because this is what it should look like when it is a full production. I had a test shot. And I want to say that I did kind of make a mistake. Somewhere in there, he, um, Hayes pointed out to me that I left down the gun. The gun tucks completely up underneath the door. And it is very, very solid friction. There is no looseness to that gun in the wing gun and all that kind of stuff as you can see right here it holds in the door very well the vintage one does not but this one does because of amazing engineering but i also want to say that although i don't have inside information i think i know what their next one that they're going to reveal that they're working on is i don't know what do you call it a purple hauler i don't know this is a hint that was thrown out but it was not confirmed this is purely my speculation and rumor might be next. So we got a little bit of news to discuss with some G.I. Joe Classified. So basically some in-hand images of what we're getting here with Torpedo and Copperhead. I think these are some fantastic looking pictures. They've done a really good job with them. And with that, the figures look great too. So with this, you know, I'm kind of leaning more towards the Super 7 and the Super Tune look. But some of the figures that they're making just really satisfy that itch. So I'm still in. 100% on classified even though some of the releases have been choppy lately these look really good and I didn't hear of any QC issues on them so maybe they've turned a corner maybe with a rough patch and floating around there's some pictures of some boxes and what box is the coolest box that people are excited about this week and it's the Arctic bat and so not a whole lot to say other than it's a recolor of the bat and of course they include some accessories you don't get with other bats and there it is, Battle Android Troopers. So with it, how many bats are they going to make? I don't know. I thought that there was a time where some of the O-rings were getting knocked off, Black Major O-rings, and that was a crazy amount of different variations of bats. I think Classified is going to beat that. Okay, so McFarlane, Batman, 66 Wave. So this is really a nice-looking wave, and trying to figure out a way to to slip a Batman and a Robin back in there, and 
I'm taking it their little mouth breathing pieces are molded in or it's permanently attached so with that I mean I wouldn't be against them just putting the standard figure out and then those clip on but uh, I have a feeling they are stuck on there forever and so the first ones feel more special because they don't have something stuck to their face I guess I don't know but this actually comes with accessories cool looking accessories the colors are extremely vibrant these look amazing I love this line the capes still suck but uh, for the most part, I want a, a, a set to keep sealed and a set to open. But the opening set, you're, you're going to experience terrible cape syndrome. But aside from that, they look fantastic. So it looks like Entertainment Earth is getting this uh, assortment wave of figures for TNT. These are the Playmates reissue figures. And you can get this set of two, four, there's like six of them in here for like 80 bucks, something along those lines. And I bet you it's a case, and I bet you there's a duplicate in there. Nope, I was wrong. You get six figures for 80 bucks, so I mean, maybe that's not the greatest deal in the world. They also have uh, four figures. You can get a, a Shredder, a Krang, and then Rocksteady Bebop, and that's 44 bucks. So yeah, not much TMNT news this week for me, uh, but there is some Whiplash in Motu news. This is about all the Motu news that I've got this week. There's a lot of like rumor speculation or some digging deep. I just don't know how much of that's going to come to fruition, so I'm just staying out of that until we can actually see something like this. And so, anyway, this Whiplash looks pretty good. It's one of those things that you get with Masterverse that they add a bunch of stuff to it that maybe I don't want, and hopefully it's all removable, and you can just make them look classic. And that's the way it kind of is. You can remove the extra frills, make them look classic, but they add the extra frills more or less so people just don't think it's too plain and boring. And I understand that. I get that. I'm fine. And so with it, it looks like a pretty decent whiplash overall. So the next figure in the Four Horsemen figure obscura is the Monkey King. And this Monkey King is cool looking. I, I don't know anything about Monkey King, but this figure looks cool. And that's really all there is about it. I know that they made a Santa Claus. They made a Headless Horseman. And now they've got this guy. And he comes with a slew of accessories. Lots of accessories. So... It's pretty interesting. I'm sure people are going to yell over this. And pretty much everything that the horsemen make is amazing looking. Just looks amazing. So uh, with that, it's available now at the horseman store for, for only 60 bucks. Uh, I, I don't know if only is a good price. Not a whole lot of Star Wars news this week, but you know, generally had that May the 4th, and then that was a quite a bit there, and then there's not much. And I wouldn't want a ton of Star Wars news every week. Like, oh man, I'm getting inundated with all this stuff that I'm not going to buy. But here's this. Now, I want to say something about this set. It's available for pre-order at Target, Target only. And when these kind of sets sell out, they get expensive on the secondary market. So if you want this, just get it now. Uh, I don't know if you're gonna, you should play chicken on this and wait and see if you might be able to catch it on clearance or something like that or find it in the store. Uh, but with that, I'm not really in on any of these that are closed box and... Uh, that's just the way I am so and I really just don't see the point of this whole set but other collectors do so I hope they enjoy it okay so if you pre-ordered this 30 230 $230 vintage collection Boba Fett's throne room and I guess it's also going to double as Bib Fortuna's throne room or you could use it as a Jabba throne room right so anyway if you do pick this up or you did pre-order it it's starting to ship now. It's hitting the U.S. So uh, it's been a long time since this whole pre-order of this thing. But it does look pretty good. It looks amazing. I just still feel like it's way overpriced. But I think that it's going to be one of those things that is probably going to be harder to get on the secondary market, of course. And won't be able to get it again. So it's almost like a HasLab that's not a HasLab, but it's in that pocket. And it's kind of cool to have all those accessories and stuff. It is the original trilogy. It's something I would love to have had it, would have loved to have had it at a better price than this. But, I mean, that's the world we live in, and it's either pay to play or don't play at all. So I guess I'm in the don't play at all when it comes to that Star Wars stuff. But let me know what you think about this week's weekly news and review. What else is going on out there that I missed? I like to hear about cool stuff and stay up on it. Like and subscribe to Dare Hanger out. I like your pins. I am Nightshade. My pronouns are they, them. I'm Sam. I'm she, they, but 
You already know that. <laughs> <laughs>